See how we made this amazing hot water shower. It's off grid and it will take us off roading into the wilderness where we will have nice hot water showers. Our goal was to design and build the ultimate wilderness shower for our overland camper. We wanted it to hold enough water for two long showers, have adequate pressure to drive a traditional shower head, and get enough hot water for chilly weather at those high altitudes. We created our design with two connected eight foot long by four inch diameter PVC pipes that hold about 11 gallons of potable water. We painted the system black to, to promote heat absorption by the sun, but we've added a 12 volt heating element that plugs directly into our solar generator. This gave us 105 degree water in just four hours of heating time. Plus the whole system can be pressurized up to 30 PSI for a great long lasting shower. We're extremely happy with the results. Let's start with a look at the design and construction details. We're really excited about our hot water, hot shower system that we're building for the top of our camper. And one of the innovations we came up with is how to really make it hot. There's a lot of solar water showers on the market where the sun just radiates heat into a tube. We've tried these, I've made one, and it doesn't get the water very hot. So we're gonna actually try a 12 volt heating element inserted into the system. So let us show you how we're gonna do that and a couple other pieces of the shower system. So for starts, this is a 12 volt water heater. And it has a standard uh, three quarter inch uh, pipe thread on here. And we decided to put it into the shower system through one of these PVC end caps. They're pretty thick. It's a four inch PVC end cap and this will go on the one, one end of our shower system. So to do this, I drilled a 7 8 inch hole into the end cap and got a hard tap set and was able to tap it out with a 3 quarter inch tap. Right like this. Um, I used a crescent wrench, adjustable wrench to, to do the tapping. And now our heating element very nicely screws right in to our end cap. So we'll put plumber's tape on this when we attach it for real. And there's a rubber uh, gasket on here. And we'll be able to cinch that down nice and tight. And we'll be able to plug this into a cigarette lighter, which we'll have on our solar system, uh, to be able to create hot water. So that's one end. That actually goes right on here like this. We decided to put the heater at the same end with the spigot where the shower water will come out. We have our spigot here. And this is a standard uh, two inch reducer here on this four inch pipe with a three quarter threaded end. Just pick these up uh, at the plumbing store and our um, hose bib will screw right into that. Again, we'll put plumber's tape on that as well. And now the water coming out will be very close to the actual heater. So that's that end of the system. At the other end, we needed to have a bleeder valve, which would allow air to escape when we're filling it. Uh, we purchased this nice through, through hole um, kit here, which is, has a hose thread on it and a hose end cap. So I'll actually be able to hook a garden hose onto this if I need to. And I drilled a one inch hole in this end cap, which will go on the other end of the shower system. And that'll allow us to, to uh, screw this in. I tapped it out as well. And this piece will screw right in here. And we'll show it to you all assembled. We also wanted to be able to pressurize this to fill it up. So I was able to get these quarter inch Schrader valves. It's a regular like bicycle type pump valve. Um, quarter inch thread there. And separately, this another through hole connector, this time a bit smaller, and the Schrader valve Sorry. will go right in there. So that'll be our pressurizing, the way that we'll pressurize this, and this will be our bleeder valve. All right, I'll throw this together and we'll see how it looks. Nora's doing a nice paint job on our end caps. 
Okay, we're gonna use lots of plumber's tape because shower system's gonna be pressurized to 30 PSI. And we want all the fittings to be really nice and tight. Put about five wraps of the plumber's tape on each threaded component. And notice you always thread clockwise with the threads pointing towards you. There's our heating element. We got about five nice wraps of plumbing tape on there for a nice tight seal. Plus we have that rubber gasket on the top. So we're double protected with this. Nope. And we're ready to start gluing. It's all standard P4 inch Schedule 40 PVC. I chose Schedule 40 because it's thick and strong. It should help insulate to hold the heat from our solar heater and provide substantial volume for long showers. pressure relief valve with a nice little screw cap on it. Our Schrader valve for putting in pressure and our 12 volt heating element. So we're gonna fire up this little compressor, put about 30 PSI in here and we'll see how she does. It's been sitting for quite a while. Lead the pressure. One of the advantages of painting it black is it will also help promote absorption of solar radiation. So it becomes a solar heater. But what we found is that it cools very rapidly at night. So having the addition of the electric heater, which will also be plugged into the solar system, should provide us with an ample supply of really nice hot water and hot water will make the wife happy. Nicely painted and all ready to go on top of our off-grid overland camper. I decided to use simple hose clamps to attach it to our roof racks. Another exciting moment here. We're getting ready to fill the tank and now we'll turn it on. You can hear the, I don't know if you can hear the air hissing out, but We're filling right up. There we go. Okay, we have contact. We are filled up. Put my little end cap back on. Super excited to be assembling our solar generator for our off-grid overland camper. We're using a Husky toolbox, which has been through bolted to the trailer tongue. We've outfitted her with two SOK 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium phosphate ion batteries. Note the batteries are mounted to a 5 8 inch plywood plate, which is through bolted through the trailer tongue. Our portable solar generator electronics are also mounted to a plywood surface that fits securely on the shelf ridge near the top of the toolbox. One of the concerns with a solar generator is you need to have adequate airflow because these components can get really hot, especially with the sun beating down on it. So we did a custom install of four little air vents on the toolbox. These are nice little air vents that also have, include a bug screen on the outside to help keep bugs out. So hopefully this will help promote circulation. The whole thing closes nicely. 
And we've got a solar generator in a box. We are all wired up to our 340 watt solar panel and all systems are go. The 12 volt shower heating element is plugged into one of two 12 volt ports that are wired with fuses to the battery bank. Let's turn on the water heater for about four hours and we'll see how hot the water gets. There it is, are you excited? Yes, I'm very excited about the hot shower. It is genius. We're gonna measure how hot it is now and we're gonna measure how long of a shower we could take. The pressure is awesome. It's very hot. And that's with the heater running about four hours, 105 degrees, powered by the sun. After gratitude to the sun. And gratitude to my husband, Jeffrey, for being a genius. I got a shower. <laughs> shower scene coming up. Oh. Oops. <laughs> How's it going, honey? It is 105 degrees, Good. and you can wash your clothes at the same time. <laughs> it's a dual purpose. We always say there has to be three purposes for everything. We can make it into a sink, we can take a shower, and we can wash our clothes. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> So excited <laughs> that the shower is ready. <laughs> so long away. Thank you for watching. And if you like what we're doing, please subscribe to our channel. And we also have our GoFundMe site if you'd like to help. Thank you.